this exercise, we want to find the means and standard deviations of x and y uh, given the joint distribution. So when we are given a distribution, it means that the question is referring to the population. We interpret this as uh, representative of everything. Even though we might not have observed them, this is indicative of the entire population. So what does it say? It says that when, for example, x has the value 3 and and that's the meaning of joint here, and when the y random variable has the value 12, the proportion of occurrence, or you can think of it as the probability of occurrence when x is 3, y is 12, is uh, 0 0.2. Okay? So likewise, for example, the uh, proportion of occurrence, or the probability of x equals to 3 and y equals to 25, uh, not possible, 0 here. And then 30% for x equals to 6, y equals to 25, and so on. Okay, so we have this set of data all given. Now, the challenge is how do we uh, enter this into our calculator. So the way to do it, again, to start it all, we need to enter values, but how do we enter? So here, we need to, first of all, linearize the, the values. So what do I mean by that? That is to say, let's uh, put them into this form. So uh, x, y and then the, the probability. So when x is 3, y is 12, probability is 0 0.2. Okay? When x is 6, y is 12, uh, probability is 0 0.1. When x is 9, probability is 12, uh, y is 12, probability is 0. And you get the idea. So we, uh, you, can, you can repeat y and then alter x, or you can keep x as 3, 3, 3, and then alter y, 12, 25, 15, uh, up to you. So either way is fine. As long as you enter the corresponding probability uh, accordingly, then that will be fine. Okay. Now, you don't really have to write this out before you enter into calculator. Uh, I write it out just to show you what I'm thinking. Uh, so here, 3 and 5, x is 3, y, 25. We see that it's 0 here. Okay. So I just continue copying the values, and then we have 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Luckily, they are all 0.1, so it's easy. So now, what do we do? And you can see the advantage of having a linearized uh, equivalent huh, listing of the table, the joint table above. So this is kind of a straightened out contingency table, which facilitates our data entry into our calculator. As you can see, we can just easily use L1 as x, L2 as y, L3 as our probability. So here we go. All right, so uh, 369, 369, 369. Very quickly, because for the calculator, it's easier to enter number by number uh, in the single list, in the, in the same list first. So uh, we repeat this, and then 25, 25, and 25, and finally, Right, so the repetition is kind of necessary because you know that x is changing and also the probability is different. Also, another caution is that uh, we, we do have zero probabilities there and you're not supposed to be skipping. Okay, so like, oh, zero, so don't enter. Just, just faithfully enter them. Uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, then zero, followed by zero, followed by 0.3, uh, then you have, okay. This is actually quite a very uh, long set of data. It's quite complex, right? You have nine numbers and then so on. So even though it, it took a while to enter all these, that's because the complexity of the problem is there in the first place. What if you do by hand? That's even te more tedious, isn't it? So, so this is already substantially better. So now let's analyze um, this joint table. And when we analyze, we're doing population. Huh? Don't forget, we are, we are trying to analyze the population because it is a distribution. So we have entered and we ask calculator to perform two variable statistics, right? Because we have two random variables here. Not because, and uh, not three variable statistics because we have three columns. We don't have three variable anyway here. So perform two variables telling uh, Excel our x value is in one, y value is in two. And finally, frequency value. That's where you have your probability. Now, even though this is probability, kind of a fractional frequency, your calculator can understand that. 
so it will it will interpret it accordingly as uh, probability so not to worry even though you it, it's calling it frequency so immediately we just uh, copy the descriptives right sx is oh no sorry sigma x because we are analyzing population and you can see why I can't get the value of sample in this uh, output here and for y the y bar is going to be 24.4 and uh, sigma y is going to be 9.3081 okay that's great we got the answers very quickly having spent good effort here now next we want to find the correlation of x and y so uh, the population correlation corral of x and y uh, just to recall is the population covariance of x and y divided by the population standard deviation of x population standard deviation of y now we have the two values on top already so that's good so it remains to find the population covariance of x and y and for that we call that it is uh, 1 over n sum xy minus uh, mu x mu y yeah? but in the case of calculator because of joint distribution we have already entered the the probability values there so uh, when we pull out the sum xy as in this case here when we pull out the sum xy we get 146.7 this is already inclusive of the division by n so we just need to basically uh, let me just denote uh, using square brackets as the calculator's buttons uh, this okay so we call out uh, x bar and call out y bar okay so the sum x y already has the probability weightage which is equivalent to having divided by n anyway we don't know the in this uh, given data here we don't know what's the sample or the population size so so there's no way to divide by n anyway so we'll just call out sum x y 146.7 minus uh, x bar 0.7 times y bar 24.4 and that's it All right so that's our covariance so uh, let me just show you how we can use calculator to pull out the variance so values 5 uh, pull out the values sum xy right so we want sum xy minus uh, x bar and multiplied by y bar so that's bars 5 2 times bars 5 uh, 5 I believe so overall the covariance is going to be 7.62 okay so finally what we want is correlation the corral of x and y and that is going to be uh, clearly 7.62 over our sigma x 2.1 as gotten above and 9.3081 all right, but you don't really have to do this number calculation here. You can use this value, 7.62, all right, divided by uh, sigma x bars 5, which is uh, going to be 4 times bars 5, uh, 7. Okay, so that's our correlation. So let's just copy that down, 3898. So that's it. We have received our answer. Uh, through this calculation here.